Hello and welcome to Gardening at 58 North. So in this video I'd like to give you an update on my potato tomato graft. So this is like a tomato plant you could call it. Basically what I've done is I've got the root system of a, of a potato and grafted on top of that a cherry tomato and that gives you the best of both worlds ideally where you have tomatoes on the top, potato crop on the bottom. Now I did do this last year and the tomato actually grew better on the potato root system than it did on its own root system, although I only got a tiny little potato, probably the size of a pea or, or a grape. It wasn't really much success in getting a crop of potatoes. But this year I'm much more hopeful. I've done a video earlier, I'll put a link in the description for that. But basically what I did is this year I used a potato that was only just coming up through the soil and I made sure that it was well earthed up as well. And I also grafted the, the graft much higher up to stop roots coming down. Because the problem I had in the first year is the tomato kept trying to put out new roots from above the graft and so it was trying to grow in its own root system and also the potato was quite a bit older and it wasn't earthed up so it wasn't really able to produce the potatoes very well. So this is how the plant's doing now, it's right at the end of the season so the date today is actually the 7th of October here in North Scotland by this time of year the light levels are really bad, it's cold, it's damp and basically disease sets in, gets cold damage and even here in the polytunnel tomato plants are just going to start dying at this time of year. So it's time for me to dig it up, it's basically the end of the season. You can see there's a little bit of tomato blight here and there, blight hasn't been too bad on this this year but there's a lot of this kind of white rot that sets in, you can see here it basically goes mouldy and rots off this section of the, of the stem as well, you can see that white rot starting to set in. So the plant basically has come to the end of its life. But it's had a really, pretty decent crop, you can see there's a lot of tomato still on here, so I'll save these, maybe make green chutney or, or, or fried uh, green tomatoes, they're looking quite good. And I'll show you the graft as well, so looking down here, I actually grafted it onto three stems, so I think the most successful one was this one on the left here, you can see that's the point of the, of the graft, You've got the tomato above a little bit of a tomato leaf on that and then you've got the potato stem. I also did this one, this one snapped as I took it into the polytunnel um, but as you can see it has actually survived just hanging on by a thread so it's not got a very good connection that stem but it is actually growing off the potato root system and then I also have that one at the back which uh, which is grafted okay that's quite a good connection as well you can see there the decent graft on that and that's the, uh, again, so there's, there's three basically, three main stems coming off of the potato plant, which I've grafted three tomatoes onto. And as you can see, there's already a green potato poking out of the soil, so it's already a better success than last year, because that potato is definitely bigger than, than, a, than a grape. And now the only thing I have had to do is, you can see there's a potato trying to grow up from the root system. I have had to constantly cut off any shoots that come up from the potato, especially when it was first grafted it was sending up loads of shoots so I kept cutting them off constantly but all the energy that's gone into the root system of this for the potatoes has come from the tomato there hasn't been any leaves on it from the potato root system so it has gone fully through the graft and it hasn't grown at all with its own leaves these potatoes so I've now cut off most of the stems and I'm ready to start digging back with the soil, see what we've got here with, uh, when it comes to the potato crop. So I've left a few of the stems on just to show that this is definitely a tomato graft on top of a potato. So you can see some of the tomato leaves, some of the old trusses as well that had tomatoes on it. And even this one that I thought was uh, connected quite weakly is actually quite a strong stem. Um, and the actual potato stems are a bit woodier than they would be normally, I think just because it's had to size up its stems to kind of match in with the, the size and the, the, of the tomato stems, because obviously a potato doesn't normally grow particularly large, but tomatoes can grow several meters. So what I think it's done is it sized up its stems to kind of match the size of the tomato stems. So you can see this one, for example, although it was uh, hanging on by a thread, it's actually thickened up where it was connected, and that's actually quite a sturdy connection now. And it's actually breaking easier on the potato uh, stem. Potato tends to be less woody than you can see the snap, nice snap on the tomato is often a lot woodier on a tomato stem. These ones as well, the graft is uh, really quite strong. This is the best graft and I'll show you how well that's taken. So as you can see this is definitely the best graft. The tomato has really wrapped itself around the stem of the potato and it's grafted very nicely. You can see that's the cleft that I made originally in the potato stem. And these are very small thin stems when I first grafted them, but they're now thick sturdy plants uh, sending up plenty of nutrients between the roots and the, and the leaves. So I'm hoping for a half decent crop of potatoes. Now I'm never expecting as good a crop as I would expect with just potatoes on its own root system, it's with its own leaves. Because normally with potatoes nearly all the energy goes from the leaves into the roots before potatoes whereas with a tomato plant you've got a lot of that energy going off to the actual tomatoes so we've already had a decent crop of tomatoes 
so a lot of the energy has gone elsewhere but it'll be interesting to see how this is now I'm not sure why it does better on the root system of the potato than it does on its own root system or at least in my case anyway I've got a couple of theories why one of them is that I'm actually growing this out of the soil my other tomatoes are in the soil so there might possibly be a root disease or the soil is just too cold for the tomatoes and this is slightly warmer in, in, in a pot. The other reason might be because potatoes are a plant that can handle cooler temperatures, it's, it's not really a tropical plant, we can grow potatoes outside in quite cold conditions here in Scotland, whereas tomatoes have to have a, a heated environment, they can't be grown outside in Scotland, it's just too cold. So the root systems are adapted to colder conditions and possibly the, the cooler soil temperatures in the polytunnel might hamper the tomato's ability to absorb nutrients and water. And so having a root system with a potato on it might give it an advantage in a cooler environment like Scotland. In a hotter environment, it might not have that advantage, but certainly here, it seems to prefer the root system of the potato, probably because it can absorb the nutrients despite the colder soil temperatures. So I'm going to go ahead now and start emptying this out, see what potatoes we have. We've definitely got one, but um, which is more than last year really, because last year was basically nothing at all. Um, but it'll be interesting to see how many we do actually get. So I'll try and keep it on camera shot the whole time so you can see what's happening. So I'm just going to pull it out. You can see that's the grafted potato there. You can see there's definitely some potatoes, which is a good sign. And these are deep enough so they're not green. So they'll be nice and edible. So I'm just going to try and loosen this out a little bit. If I can, I'll try and take it out connected to the tomato roots, tomato uh, top, just because it'll be more interesting, I think. So you can see, we've obviously already got a few nice little uh, potatoes. Let's put them to the side. See if I can pull this up with a few connected. It's definitely feeling pretty good, actually. That's actually quite a good crop of potatoes. That. I'm quite surprised at that. So that, there we are. That's the crop of potatoes. You can see the tomato stem on top. When you work your way down, they're all connected one of these three stems that were grafted so that's quite a nice connection so what I'll do now is I'll just pick up all the potatoes set them aside and we'll see how many potatoes we've actually had from this harvest so that's all the potatoes now dug up and it's, it's quite a nice uh, harvest actually so you can see that's how many I've got now if I was just to grow the potato on its own root system I would probably expect a higher yield than this this isn't bad for the size of the bag but definitely you can do better um, especially as this has been growing for quite a long time. It is more like a main season potato the length of time it's been growing, not like a first early, which is this is starting to look like. I think this might have been a first early variety or a second early variety, so they're basically smaller potatoes and uh, they harvest a lot earlier. But you can see it's actually still growing, so there was quite a lot of these potatoes that were quite small with shoots still attached. All of these had shoots still attached, so they were all still growing. You can see the connection point there. There was no sign of the, the connecting stems weakening, so it wasn't close to harvest, or at least it would have grown for several more months, I reckon, if, you, if the conditions were correct for the tomato to stay alive. And you can see there's loads of these tiny ones, so it was definitely sending out lots of new ones performing new potatoes, so that's quite interesting to see. So what that tells me is when it comes to potatoes, and they, they, normally they grow for a certain number of, of weeks or months, depending on the variety, they then die down after that period of time, they go dormant and it's ready to uh, pick the, the potatoes. Some varieties like first dillies, they can be ready in just a few weeks, whereas the main season crops might take three or four months until they're ready. It seems like that is governed by not the root system, but by the plant at the top. So for example, these have been growing for several months now, and these are still showing signs that they're growing actively, whereas all the other t uh, potatoes outside have gone dormant now. So definitely, if you're growing this in a, in a country where it has very long summers, this could be a slight advantage, give you a longer growing season on your potatoes. And I'll show you the root systems actually and how the potato root system has done. It's actually done a lot better than it has by itself. I think because it has to grow bigger to compensate for the size of mass on top of the tomato. So that's why the root system is compensated for that. So this is just a potato that I've dug up. It is dying back because of the time of year, uh, but it's still got a bit of green on it. So it's not completely died back yet. Basically with this, you can see it would grow in about, probably about two or three foot high, more, more two foot than, than three foot. So it doesn't have a huge amount of stem to support. The stems themselves, they're not quite as woody. Uh, they're a lot like sapier and not as strong as these potato stems here. And the root system is quite different as well. So the root system is quite deep on this one. The, the original potato must have been quite deep underground. But you can see it's quite sparse. Now there would have been a few more roots than this if it was in active growth. I think it's because it's near the end of the season, it's starting to die back a little bit. But then when we check the system that's been growing with tomatoes on the top, 
these have got much bigger root systems. Normally when I grow potatoes, I wouldn't expect quite so many roots like this. So I think definitely it has encouraged more rooting. It could be to do with the growing environment, but I think it's probably to do with having a larger amount of leaves on the top. It has to grow extra roots to compensate to, uh, to keep it growing. And you can also see all these side shoots growing with new potatoes forming, so it's definitely actively growing. You can see the original potato is here. It was actually quite a big potato originally, but I think it's rotted off and that's all that's left at the base there. And what I had basically is I had a, I allowed a potato to grow very leggy, very long stems, and then planted it in the ground, grafted several of the stems, three of them took, and they're the ones that have survived. There is a fourth stem here, um, but that fourth stem you can see, it never came to anything. It's rotted away now, so that didn't actually do anything. And this little stem here was one that came up recently, and but again, this wasn't providing any energy for the root system. So all the roots have come off of this, all the side stems as well, come off these three main stems. So it's interesting to see how good a root system it has and how healthy it still is, especially considering this tomato is starting to die back already. So the root system was probably even larger than this originally. So that's about it for this update on my tomato potato graft. I've been quite impressed with the results this year. I think I'll definitely try it again next year. Use the same technique where I allow, allow the potatoes to get very leggy and graft onto that leggy growth. I should probably try and plant them out a bit earlier though. This was planted out I think June time possibly so it didn't have as long a growing season as I could have given it and by the time it gets to October it starts to die back. So I'll try this again next year see how the results are. It'd be nice to have double cropping again. I might try this in the greenhouse in the soil see how it does in the, in the soil where it's less restricted by its root system but I don't think it needed too much more space because although um, there was quite a lot of roots in this compost. They were mainly concentrated to the top, to the surface. It does seem to be quite shallow rooted, so it doesn't need a huge amount of space for its roots by the looks of things. But it does have a very intense root system. And that's something quite common on potatoes, a bit more on potatoes than tomatoes. Tomatoes tend to have a bigger root system, but more sparse. Potatoes tend to have a, a more dense root system, but it doesn't uh, spread out as far. So definitely you could grow it in shallower soil probably. Potatoes need deep soil just for their tubers, but to be honest, they don't have a deep root system compared with some other plants, so they don't need as a, as a bigger area for their roots, but you normally give them that area so they, the, the tube is nicely covered so they don't go green. So it'll be interesting to see how it does next year. Maybe I could put the tomato plants closer together if the root system don't compete as much. But that's about it for this update, and I'll probably see you guys again next year when I hopefully try this again, and uh, with these extra techniques that I've learned this year with starting the potatoes as a very young plant, letting them grow nice long leggy growth so I can have all that potato stem covered up, because it's the potato stem that forms the potato, so that needs to be well underground. I'll keep those techniques for next year, and I should hopefully get another good crop of potatoes along with a crop of tomatoes.